Lahore Grammar School Quetta lesson by Faiza Shah for grade 7 component is comprehension. We are covering the topic winter danger. Uh, from your reader, tell me a story. Characters of the story. It's Jared. That's Kate's father. He's a Wootsie. Uh, Cage, he's the main character. He's a boy um, who's telling the story. Tadlock family, they are relative of Kate's dead mother. Uh, there is Uncle Adam, Aunt Jess, and Sam is Kate's cousin. Now, this story is uh, a historical fiction, a story with fictional characters that is set in a real time in history. So the story may uh, the story is true. However, the characters are fictional. Okay, summary of the lesson. Did you ever wish you were a pioneer traveling and living in the vast wilderness? Well, when I was a little girl, I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to um, go somewhere in the forest or in the desert and, you know, find my own adventure. I was the kind of person. I was quite imaginary. I wanted to um, ride my bicycle and, you know, uh, pack my, uh, my backpack and... Uh, would go somewhere into the streets, you know, finding my own adventure. I would do that. Uh, however, William O'Steele was a little boy living in the mountains of Tennessee, that is in America, and he was the kind of person. He was also the little boy who always wanted to find his own adventure. So instead of going out and uh, looking for adventure, he started writing about it. So he wrote this story about Cage and his father and about Uncle Adam and Aunt Jess and their son, Sam. Uh, it's a story that is uh, quite true, uh, but the uh, characters, they're all fictional. They're not true. They're not real. Okay? They're imaginary. So Cage and his father had come to spend the winter at the Tedlocks, who owned a cabin. Jared is a woodsy. Now, a woodsy is a person who stays in the woods. They don't really have a house. They uh, feed on animal meat and sometimes on plants. And they would, you know, uh, spend their summers and winters and uh, winters and springs, autumns, all the season out there in the forest uh, surviving, right? So he had no home. Instead, he lived in forest hunting animals for their skin, uh, for clothes and meat as food. Jard left the boy, that is Cage, with his mother's relatives to spend the winter, as he won't be able to protect him from the bitter cold weather. However, Cage was fully trained to shoot arrows and hunt as good as his father, and he felt bad staying back at the Tedlocks. He didn't want it to stay back with the Tedlocks and, you know, be a burden on them. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't want it to sit there idle and not do anything, because he was not very... Uh, good with farming however he was he was fully trained to live in a forest so he really preferred to stay in the forest rather staying with the tadlocks in a cabin since his mother died he didn't want it to let go of his father but another reason of feeling bad about staying at the tadlock was that they were not in a good condition themselves especially after uncle adam had an accident and almost lost his life Cash thought that his uncle and aunt would be happy to have a less mouth to feed than to have him over i'm sorry so um so that is why he felt bad he number one he didn't want his father to go and leave him there uh, the other reason was that he didn't want it, uh, the family to have a burden on them. He knew that their condition is not very, is not so good as well. They, uh, they were almost about to, you know, eat their own horse because the winter was bitter and they didn't have much to eat. However, on the contrary, if we look at the Tedlocks, they were very happy to have him around, especially Sam, his cousin, was kindness itself. But Cage didn't want to be a burden on the Tedlocks. Although the Tedlocks were, were, were very kind to him and they wanted him uh, to stay, but 
somewhere in his heart, Cage didn't want it to be a burden on the tadlocks. At night, Cage looked around after wearing his rabbit skin as socks and tying moccasins. The stars were bright over his head and Cage was all wrapped up in his winter clothes as the cold was terrific. He started walking down the hill as his teeth chattered and air stung his hands. Now he's almost, uh, he's already out of the house. He looked around in the room and the room was warm. He didn't want it to leave it, but then in his heart, he didn't, he was, you know, he was determined that he doesn't, that he he didn't want it to be a burden on the tadlock. So he decided to leave that night. At first he thought that he is not coming back ever. Uh, so let's see, in, uh, moving on, maybe he'll change his mind. So he looked back one more time and remembered the day his father brought him to this cozy, warm cabin. But yes, they brought bad luck to the family. And although he was not happy to leave, but he didn't want it to be a burden on such good people. So here we can see that in his heart, he, he, he didn't want it to leave, but... He knew that the tedlocks were were not in a very good good condition themselves, so he thought that a le one less person would be uh, a good thing for them. In his heart, he thought a woodsy is a woodsy and can't survive as a farm boy, and thought about his cousin, as he would be up now, by now feeding the horse and the cow. He really wanted to bring them deer meat and skin one day to pay them back for their hospitality. He had a rifle in his hand that he kept moving from hand to hand so that he could warm his free hand and his shirt. It was lighter now, so it's already beginning to, um, uh, they were, the sun was already rising and there was light everywhere. And he could see, uh, and, and he could see that there were birds now everywhere and there he found a slippery elm tree. Now, a slippery elm tree is something that um, the uh, inside the bark, there's a white part of the tree that is eatable. So that is what he did. He took out his, um, his axe and uh, he stripped out the thick box uh, of the tree and pulled off the fine white inner bark and ate it. And he stuffed some of the bark in his shirt for later because obviously he's, he'll be hungry in no time. Halfway through the morning, his feet bothered him so much that he took off his moccasins and found out that his feet were in a bad shape. He didn't want his feet to be frostbitten the first day out in the wild, so he decided to look for a safer place to build fire. Something caught his eye, something that made him forget about his feet for the moment. His father used to tell him how to hunt a bear. Halfway up the hill, he could see a puff of white smoke that drafted away and another came to its place. His father used to tell him that bears sleep sound in the winter and they are easy to hunt during the winter. He took out his rifle and hoped the bear is young or even if, if old, he hoped it to be fat. Quietly, he made his way up to the hillside. The bear was breathing heavily, and that is what the smoke was coming out from. When you smoke, uh, when you are breathing in the, uh, in the, in, in a very cold day, uh, we all all get smoke out of our mouth, right? So this smoke was coming out of the bear's mouth because he was heavily breathing, breathing heavily. Now, Cage carefully placed his rifle and shot the bear between its eyes. He made space in the den and skinned the bear. He was happy because it was a young and fat bear that can easily feed a family. While he skinned the bear, he thought of the tedlocks. He wanted to take this bear back to their cabin so that he can repay them for feeding him. The bear was enough to feed them all for three weeks. He thought of staying at the tedlocks for winter and with warm weather, he could go off and they'd not be bothered with him again. Now, in the beginning, when he left the house, he didn't want to come back ever again. But as you can see, now that he uh, hunted a bear, uh, he's already decided to go back uh, for the winter and maybe he will leave them during the spring. Now moving on, he worked steadily cutting up the meat. He made a sledge and carefully placed as much meat as he could carry. 
The rest he carefully placed in the uh, in the bare skin and he tied it to the pole placed between two trees. It was high off the ground and Cage was uh, sure that it will be safe up there. Uh, no panther and no wolf will be able to reach there. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, he thought that later uh, Sam and himself, they can come back and uh, they can come back and get it later. While he pulled the sledge, he felt good for not running after his father. Instead, he could now stay with Tedlocks and pay them back for their kindness, especially when Uncle Adam is not well and they are almost out of food. Then he thought of the time when Henry Renfro, who had helped Uncle Adam in the spring, Jart said that he would rather do things himself than asking a stranger. But Uncle Adam paid him back by sending him meal when they were ill. It is necessary to pay back favors. Is that so? Would you do that? I would, I would like to ask all of you, and do answer me, um, maybe you can write a little paragraph on it. Uh, is it is it very necessary to pay off the favors? Like, if you receive a favor, then in return you should also give a, give a favor. Is it very important? Okay, so many thoughts uh, boggled his mind while he pulled the sledge back to the cabin. His father never liked taking favors, but Cage knew that people need each other. So as you can see, the boy is already thinking about many things. At first, he's, he thought that he will leave and never come back. But now he's glad that uh, he didn't really left uh, the Tedlocks and went after his father. Instead, he found a bear, he hunted it, and now he's taking it back to the Tedlocks in order to return the favor uh, that they took care of him. Now, in, in his mind... The question is rising, is it very necessary to pay back all the favors that you receive? Now let's see. He realized that his father was wrong to be alone and he trusted no one. Uh, his father was the kind of person who preferred to be alone and he trusted no one. However, Uncle Adam was not like that. He was a different person. He would take help from friends and help them when he could. It is not necessary that he would help them out of, you know, returning a favor. He would be a helper sometimes, and sometimes uh, he would ask his friends to help him. But his father was different. Now, as he started down the hollow, Cage knew that the Tedlocks never expected any return for what they did for him. They took care of him because they wanted to, and they could. And now that he's going back to the Tedlocks, he knew he was going home. So as you can see, while in his mind, he's thinking about uh, what kind of person is his father and what kind of person is his uncle. And, and then uh, in the beginning, he thought that he would never go back. He wanted to go to his father. Um, but now, uh, now in his mind, he, he's already decided that when he'll go back to the Tedlocks, it is almost as if he's going back home. Home is a place where you want to stay forever, right? So, uh, here now in the story, it is already decided that, uh, Tedlocks are now his family and that he is, uh, that he wanted to go back home. Now, the shadows were growing long. It had taken a good while to skin the bear and put the meat in the tree. But he was determined to journey as far as he could. He tried to hurry, but it was getting dark. He turned back and found gray shapes and gleaming eye following him. Oh, no. The wolves were after the fresh meat. Normally, the wolves weren't too brave. They don't like to give trouble, but... These wolves were starving and half mad at the smell of the fresh meat. The wolves might keep their distance for now, but sooner or later they will attack him. He found a shelter nearby and knew that he must build fire to keep the wolves away. He built fire, but had an uneasy feeling that the wolves were creeping nearer. He knew he had to keep the fire going or else they would attack. Just then one of the wolves attacked, but Cage killed him with his axe. While the other wolves were feasting on the dead wolf, Cage brought 
wood for fire and made sure the fire stays up. One of the wolves tried to follow him, but Cage knew what his father taught him about wolves. He must not run or else the wolf will attack. So instead, he slowly walked to gather wood. Also, he knew that if he kept talking, the wolves will remain alert not to attack. He also raised his tomahawk. Tomahawk is like an axe. But back in old old days, they were also used not only to chop off wood, but uh, they were decorated in a beautiful way to um, even go out for hunting. And that is what he did. He raised his tomahawk and he muttered aloud, I will bash your head. Um, I'll bash your head. And I'm not going, if you're not going to keep your distance, I will bash your head in it. Uh, the wolf ran back to its pack later that night. Cage uh, kept singing to keep the wolves away to keep himself up. But the fire kept him warm and sitting made him sleepy. He thought he must take out a slice of meat and roast it, but then he decided against it. He must stay hungry and cold to stay up all night. The wolves um, uh, will get tired and will eventually leave. As soon as it got lighter, to his luck, it started raining. The wolves went away and the rain soaked him to the skin. He was half frozen, but he didn't mind. He pulled his sledge and as the sun came up, Cage was now at the foot of the hill and called for Sam. Sam was surprised. His, his mouth was wide open to see Cage with lots of meat. He began to run down to help him bring it up. But his foot slipped and he fell and he slipped all the way down to Kate's feet. Aunt, Je Aunt Jess also came running after him and held Cage. Cage slept all morning. Once in a while he'd wake to hear the household sounds around him and then he would go back to sleep again. In the afternoon he woke up feeling rested and hungry. The cabin was full of the scent of the cooking meat. He felt blessed to have a warm home to come to and a warm bed to sleep in and a wonderful family who takes care of you no matter what. So you see how the boy started his journey. In his mind, he wanted to be a woodsy, but it, by the end of the story, he's already a farm boy. So you never know where you start and where you end. All you need to do is just, just to think carefully about what is there in your mind, how you want to do it, and um, what are you going to do about it, right? Okay, the question and answers. What did Cage learn from his father about wolves and bears? So you need to uh, write about wolves differently, uh, separately, and then bears separately. Whatever you know about wolves that uh, the story tells you about, uh, write about it, and then about bears. When Cage was in the wilderness, how did he keep himself warm? How did he find food? And how did he stay up all night? Now, there are three parts of this question. You need to find out how did he keep himself warm? How did he find food? And how did he stay up all night? Why did Cage decide to leave the Tedlock and never come back again? Now, in the beginning, as I said, Cage decided to leave the Tedlocks and he decided to go after his father and never come back again to the Tedlocks. That is what you need to write down. You need to write down why did he decide it so. But then later in the story, he decided uh, to go back to the Tedlocks and help them during the spring with the farm. So by the end of the story, he decided to go back home and live with the Tedlocks. So you need to write down the answer to that. Now, there are words for meaning and sentence making. Please uh, just take out 10 uh only take 10 words out of these to make sentences. The rest are all for meaning. Uh, number one is resented, then it's squeaked, specks, ledge, drifted, trembled, scuffling, slumped, tingle, thicket, fangs, frizzle, snarl, yelp, and patter. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much. Stay home, stay safe. Till we meet again at the school, that is very soon, inshallah. You take good care of yourself, and I'll be looking forward to receiving your assignments. Thank you.